John Fitzgerald's courtside. Fitzy, the atmosphere is great and uh, really looking forward to this one. What, what do you think that Alex Dimonor has to do here tonight? Uh, not miss. Uh, from start <laughs> to finish. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a hard thing when people ask you, how would you play Novak? Well, I'm not sure anyone's worked that out yet. Uh, maybe, maybe Roger and Rafa did a, a fair bit, but gee, he's so solid. And pretty good opening point, by the way. He had something to prove too. Last year at the Australian Open against Alex, he he thought Alex the year before might have, you know, could have been a little kinder to him in the press at one stage, and he seems not to forget that stuff, Novak. So he, he made Alex pay dearly. He, he was up for that match against uh, Demon at the Open last year, and uh, gee, he, he put him away in straight sets very quickly. Yeah, brutal straight sets too. 6-2, 6-1, 6, -2, 6, -1, 6 -2. It was a 49. most impressive display. And that's what the best do, Jim. You've been there, you know. You, you, the youngsters coming up, you just want to keep them where they belong. No, that where likes, you think he, that, he likes to play whack-a-mole with the, the young players, that's for sure, and try and knock them down. Oh, my goodness. It's outrageous. Impressive commencement to last. Yeah. Fitzy, I like Jim's description there. I think sometimes when you, you know, Jim, you see a lot of tennis, Fitzy, you do too. But when you're watching one of the greats of all time in any sport, you do need to take a moment to sit back and say, well, how fortunate are we to have Novak on court here? We're watching, people are watching around the world. It's yeah. we're fortunate. It's the ultimate respect, isn't it? Because you particularly if you played at a half decent level you know and you and you you know how what it takes to a degree to, to be really good at something but to be the best uh, in in any given um, Alex any Bino given sport at any given time or endeavor it, it's quite a, an amazing feat and to do it for such a long period of time you know yesterday I interviewed him and uh, you, you, know, you get to look straight in his eyes when when you get up close like that in interview and even that gives you some information about a person and um, he's an impressive individual. But then again, David, I've, uh, I've been looking, gazing into Jim Courier's eyes for years and, you know, I still haven't learned anything about how good you could be with that forehand. It just still boggles my mind. He gazes back a bit too, you know. What colour are my eyes, Fitzy? You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I get glazed when I see you, Jim. Good opening points there. Good serving. He served well the other night too, Jim, didn't he, uh, Alex? And that, that helps him then not get on the back foot too early in the rallies. Yeah, the trick for Alex is to find the right balance, isn't it? To not be over-aggressive, wait for the right shots to be aggressive with. That was perfect. Took that one right out of the air. Well, a good lateral vision here from Demonor. It was an awkward shot, and he, at the last second, he saw Djokovic move forward, so he popped it up high, made it awkward. He was sneaking in, didn't want to just push it down low. commencement for Team Australia. John Millman up off his seat. He's the ultimate cheerleader as well. You've got two of them there. On. They'll spend more time standing up than sitting down late. And, and John. That was an important game for Alex to send the message back after the love hold from Novak that he's here to play as well. Strong opening service game for the Aussie. Lo 
of 15. Fifteen all. Fifty fifteen. Hard slice on that one, just tailing away from Demonor. Well, there's that speed from the Demon. So quick to react. It's savvy too, because the, the one weakness that Novak has, the one shot that's not a strength is the overhead. So Demonor forced him to hit one, and it was a weak overhead, and it gave Alex a chance to showcase that remarkable foot speed. Novak's volleys were incredible in 2023, the best they've ever been, but the overhead still is a shot that he has doubts with. Net for service. It's just not a part of your game you get to exploit that much, though, is it? No one's ever beaten him just feeding him lobs. <laughs> Site that is Elizabeth Key in the city of Perth, along the Swan River, city full of nightlife and Murray Street Mall shopping. Of course, Kings Park just above all of that. It's a beautiful place to be, to visit, to live, all of those things. Your ter first time here, Jim, and you've been loving it. That brand new stadium hosting the AFL and cricket, etc., is superb. It's a beautiful city, spectacular. I've heard so much about it from so many players over the years. Delighted to finally get a chance to visit and see it firsthand. It is not disappointed. So on serve here in the opening set, a little bit of breaking news, Jim, that Team Serbia have had a rep they're going to replace their singles player. So Olga Danilovic is not playing. She's suffering from fatigue after having the two singles matches and the mixed doubles, so they're bringing in Natalia Stevanovic oh, to play. So she's ranked 185 in the world. Yep. And uh, 
which is closer to Tomjanovic's ranking, although Tomjanovic obviously missed the, almost the entirety of last year. So interesting change there. That is interesting. Changes the dynamic of fraction here. Danilovic was just warming up moments before they walked onto the court. That doesn't mean that she might not make herself available for mixed doubles if needed. We'll see. Love 15. I can hear the sounds of Todd Woodbridge's mind frantically looking up all the information <laughs> to get ready to call that match. Fifteen. Good signs for Dimonor that Novak is feeling the need to try and be that aggressive in rally. Gives up an unforced error. Alex gets to 40-15. First set to a piece. John Fitzgerald is deep inside the Australian team zone with Matt Ebden. Yeah, I'm here with a, a very proud Matt Ebden. He loves his green and gold these days, playing great for Australia. And Matty, what sort of tactics can you tell Alex to play against the best player in the world? Well, I think uh, he's just got to take confidence from his last match here, you know, a couple of days ago, and um, play to the crowd, play to the conditions, and just, you know, he, he's on the verge of top 10 himself. These are the matches he wants to start to be winning in the next year or two to, to really solidify himself as one of the great players in the world. So this is the best opportunity right here at home. Stay with us, mate. So he's got to play his game. He's got to attack. He's got to come in as much as he can. Down the line a little bit to that backhand's hard, though, isn't it? It's no secret. I mean, Novak, he's unbelievable everywhere. Alex has worked hard this last month to even be a little more aggressive. You know, we know he's got all the, the counter-attack, the defense. Um. But the great thing about Alex is he's, he's always looking to improve, you know? He's not looking to just rest on his game and, and be happy at 12 in the world or, or thereabouts. He's really looking every day, every week, about, with his coach and with his team, even with, with us. How can he get better? What can he do better? He's, he's always really open to that so and he's gonna have to find something here today because obviously Novak's you know close to unbeatable at the moment. Gee, it's impressive isn't it down here close to the court mate a great spot to watch from. Isla's ready to go, you and Storm are ready to go. Look, we're, we're all ready. Um, 
exactly. Yeah, we're, you know, we're always looking to try to get up 2-0 and, and not have to go, to go to a mixed doubles. But if we're called upon, we will be ready to give it our best shot. Well, we saw you play the other night, mate. We've got faith in you. Well <laughs> done. Congrats on what you're doing and uh, good luck for the rest of this. Let's hope we get to Sydney. Thank you, mate. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Matty. and testing Djokovic here. That's the first that we've seen him bring in the, the slice on. backhand, especially down the line. That was a very effective shot against Taylor Fritz. And the first time he uses against Novak, Novak overhits it. And Alex at 30 all, not far away from a break point here. thinking, well, I played a pretty good point there. 40, 30. And he's right. <laughs> this is an outrageous stop and pop from Novak here. This is a hard shot to handle. Below the net, a low chip, and he's able to hit a cold winner off of that? That's all you can do, clap your hands. Alex asked the right question. Novak pulled out the ace out of his sleeve, not out of his racket. Maybe even a joker. Maybe a joker, there you go. From the world number one. Look at which leads 3 2. Team Serbia leads 3 games to 2. It's, it's actually staggering the level of tennis that he's able to consistently produce day in, day out, year in, year out. It's mind-boggling it is incredible that you can just continue to you know he's been tested early here and no matter how high the bar is raised he seems to be able to you know in high jumping parlance put it up the next height and clear it the other thing you have to admire is just his, his level of fitness and preparation and preparedness as well year in year out it's he leaves nothing to chance. He's the ultimate pro. I and mean, there, there are many of them in the game, but he is taking it to a whole nother level with his diet, his commitment to uh, everything about being as good as he can be. Now, it's been a fascinating commencement. And there's the eyes that John Fitzgerald spoke about before when you gaze into them and get a sense of who he is and at the moment what you see is he's the best tennis player on the planet and he's Time. been tested here early by Alex Dimonor. Mentioned during that break that doesn't seem to matter how high you raise the bar. Novak's happy to put it up to the next height and jump it on the first attempt. It's impressive. But Dimonor, I think he's got to be happy with the way this has started Jim so far so good he stayed with Novak and even put a little pressure on him in that last service game Novak had to come up with the goods which he did and now the, the pendulum of pressure swings back across the net on the green and gold side his turn to defend his serve but Demon Art has won every single point when he's made a first serve so far today against the best returner on hard courts we've ever seen there's another one Fifteen love. Thirty love.
30, 15. Fitzy, I think Alex is getting the balance of aggression and creativity right so far. He's not overplaying from my lens. What do you think? Well, I don't think Novak is playing as well tonight as he did against Alex at Melbourne Park last year. He was faultless that night. He was devastating. He's making these a couple of errors himself here. the Australian fans waving their flags. It's just a crazy level of athleticism he from both sides on. of the net. Novak, no problem to get this one. Look at the hops on Alex here and the pirouette and the strength to get that one down at the feet with the little oomph on it. Fabulous, fabulous tennis. Look at the marks that have been left on the court. The move in was so impressive. He was virtually on the baseline, but he decided that he was on his way. Three all. Thank you, please. Novak only lost seven times last year, 56 and 7. Yannick Sinner beat him twice and Holger Rune beat him twice. Sinners were at the end of the season, Davis Cup and round robin at the ATP finals. If you're Alex, do you look at those matches at all? Are they mutually exclusive? Do you investigate how that happened? Or different player, different scene? The latter. <laughs> There's not really... A when you look at the players that beat him across the season last year, they're, they're, he lost in, in some, some ways in different ways. Center beats him the way that Stan Bavrinka has beaten him in the past. Firepower off the forehand, the backhand, and the serve. It's just an all-out assault, and he has more artillery than Demonor does. So you can't really try and replicate that. 15-15. I think Alex and Leighton and Adolfo Gutierrez, his day-to-day -day coach, have come up with the right game plan so far using his skills, right? You can only use the pieces that you have of the puzzle to solve it. And it's the slice backhand, it's the drop shots, the defense. It's uh, disruption, surprising Novak by getting to the net at times. You can't just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. You lose that battle. Net for Alex loses that battle. Center could win it. Not Alex. Yeah, I agree, Jim. You, you can only, it's horses for courses. You can only play someone with the skill set that you have. And, I think the telling thing that Matt Ebden said in that little interview. I think the telling thing that Matt Ebden said was that he has to try and keep increasing his power as he improves towards that top ten. He has been a featherweight over the journey, not a heavyweight hitter, but 
One way to help him surprise Novak, as you suggested there, is to take the ball on the rise. And sometimes you see him even run through the approach shot. And that just allows or disallows Novak to have a bit more time. It's the old saying, it takes a little bit of time away from him when he runs through the approach. And that's something he's trying to incorporate here too, I think. Timonov's forcing that 40, from Djokovic with his speed and capacity to get the ball back quickly. His fast feet. Slice, Jim. He, he's using it better than ever, and it's get, getting in some results, isn't it? He's two for two with a down the line yes. slice. Twice he's deployed it. Twice Novak has overhit the forehand and made an unforced error. You know Novak will adjust, though. He's too good not to. Eight unforced errors off of the forehand wing for Novak already. It's in first break point by the player. Advantage Team Australia. Thank you. Two and it was deep and it was challenging. It's a quality second serve. It's a, basically another first serve. That is something that Novak does do quite often. It, it didn't surprise Alex. Alex was on the return. He just missed it. But when he's pushed in the corner, Novak, he'll swing mightily on that second serve and he got a, he got a good one there. is what you're faced with you know you sometimes have to take risks when you don't think you know you've got the best chance even because Djokovic makes you play that that approach is pretty good but that's what you're dealing with it's going to come back in a very difficult situation with that player Slice. That was the that was the short slice to make someone actually have to move yes. off the baseline forward. So Djokovic decides to go all the way, and maybe that matchup is a little bit better than actually hitting a decent approach shot and going in against the Djokovic backhand. 
just love the creativity. That's just not a shot that Novak sees very often and then a bullet of a pass to follow. Because Alex tends to crowd uh, the baseline when returning Serbia. second serves, he's going to get a lot of big second serves from Novak because Novak typically does respond by going large with his second when someone's on the baseline. If a player stands 15 feet deep to return a serve, that's when he will take 15, 20 miles an hour off of that serve and just roll it in. But Alex needs to be ready for the big ones coming his way. So far, Novak's taken a lot of risk on his second serve, David, and he's yet to hit a double, but yes. he will. If he keeps going this big, he definitely will. It's a question of when it happens. Fourth juice. Just the one break point opportunity so far for Demon Orr. If you do anything different here, for Alex Demonor. Nope. Keep doing what you're doing. Just be ready if a second serve's coming for him to go big again. And if he doesn't, you'll have time to adjust to that. But you have to be looking for it. First things first. Here's a first serve for Novak. You got to admire him, don't you? You can't help Deuce. but admire that. I mean, Alex did everything right, got the first serve back into play, was ready, except for the, the change of play. And how well did he execute that? Team Serbia. of magnificence. Wonderful tennis. Djokovic survives the two break points and leads 4-3. Eleven minutes and fifty-seven seconds. Fitz, it's, um, this is an Australian music reference, but that was like Evie parts one, two and three. It was just tremendous <laughs> from start to finish. <laughs> Very good. 
Yeah, no, it was. It's high quality. It really is. No, Novak, I thought it's interesting. I found it interesting to see how many uh, unforced errors he'd made, though. That's not normal for him. It's, it's a lot more than what Alex's is. And he's normally over seven games, six and a half, seven games. When we saw 14 unforced errors, that's, that's uh, not him at his best. But nevertheless, you know, he can't be expected to play at that peak every single day. And uh, he's having trouble with Alex. He's staying with him early. Yeah, I lost. So, the, so uh, Victor Troik and uh, Novak have just asked for the trainer to come in. I'm sure it's just to give his wrist a rub again, same as the other day. They thought the central umpire was slow there, David. But that's what it is. He's just getting a bit of work. And as would be the case with Hendricks muscular, he's pointing a little bit further up his forearm towards the elbow so just stiffening and that's a different Time. spot that he's working on there than yesterday it was a lot lower down near the wrist so he's wanting a little bit of extra time here too because he asked he's not asking for a medical timeout he just wanted a little bit of a rub down on the change of hands because he wants to keep that medical timeout which he only gets one of per injury for later on and he's disappointed that that was such an abbreviated stay because yeah it was not communicated quickly to the the physio who's right on the court basically in a couple couple seats away from you Fitzy but um, yeah he was disappointed yep. he didn't get another 30 seconds there. correct that's all it was Novak's win over Yuzhi Lehechka from the Czech Republic yesterday. He did receive a medical timeout and then also received another visit from the trainer on a subsequent change of ends, but was able to overcome it and play seemingly normal tennis. It's apparently something that he has suffered from at various stages in his career. It's not an unusual one, according to some sources on his team, for him to deal with. So they think he's going to be okay to manage it, David. At the moment, though, he's finding Alex Demonor difficult low. to manage. Goran always looks a little bit concerned, even when things are going 100% their way. But uh, that is a concerned look on the coach's face. You wouldn't know it, but uh, whatever seat Gorn sits on, Tennis Australia has like a little bit of a, a heat adjuster. He is in literally the hot seat. <laughs> they keep him there all the time. When you work for Novak, pressure's on. Novak held his serve to love in the opening service game and does on. likewise there. Squares it up at four apiece. There's a lot going on. Earlier in the match, Novak went over there to get some eye drops. He does wear contacts, so he wanted to put some, some of that solution in his eyes. You'll see him do that from time to time in different tournaments. Just went over and got some sort of a gel or powder, something, some sort of energy product that he just took on board.
Well, a little bit of rope a dope there from Demonor. Softer balls and then. The bigger winner. 15. This varying strategy from Demonor is fascinating. serve Jim you talked about he, he went all out a bit more on that um, but these these new balls David they, they just travel through the Not air a bit 30. further they're, they're, the brand new balls out of the can the felt's tighter around the core of the ball and it will carry a little further so demon or decelerated a little bit in that first point just kept a couple in near the baseline and it's worked out for him here was serving and volleying behind that one at love 30. He might throw something a little different in here. You, you got to be wary for the wide second serve here with some speed on it at love 30. Stretch Djokovic on his last service game had the two break points. Love 14. How he served to love. Now three break points. This has been a very, very good 10 or so minutes. His volleys have improved 14. so much over the years, and that was not an easy volley, but he was vulnerable. Alex was there. He's Just got a he's little got, too much on that, Fitzy. Yeah, he did. Sorry, Jimmy. He, 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 you've got a split second to make a decision on what you're going to actually do when you get to the ball there, and he just hit it too hard. He had to take some speed off it. Easier said than done. because the Australian will serve for the set. 5-4. Five, four. What are you talking about? It's, it's an injury you treated yesterday. Yes, that's why it was pretty so, so the logic in that, if it continues getting worse the next day, you won't treat it because it already has been uh, accurate. Occurring yesterday. No, I said it hasn't proved before the match. When I started playing, and the more I'm playing, it's getting worse. That's what I told you.
So trainer immediately on the scene as soon as Novak Djokovic returned to the team zone for Team Serbia. An interesting conversation then ensued. We kind of came into the conversation after it had started. I'm not sure if he was asking to receive a medical timeout and the trainer said, no, it's not a new injury. We can't oh, give you one. No, so what are you talking about? It's an injury that you treated yesterday, and why would you treat it today? You know I have an injury. And the trainer, is, it's not a medical timeout. That was just a treatment on the change of ends, but Novak definitely was dissatisfied with that scenario, wasn't he? He also said that I started off okay, but as I'm playing, it's getting worse. Some conversations. Team Serbia, so all eyes at the moment will be on Alex Dimonor as he serves for this opening set. He's done a remarkable job. He's serving at a high percentage of first serves in play, and Dimonor yet to lose a point when he makes a first serve. Just needs a few more to tuck this one away. So if you get through a set against the world number one with that sort of statistic, you have to rarefied situation. Alex loves playing for the green and gold. In fact, his best ever win ranking wise happened playing for Team Australia. I mean, it was against Nadal. Nadal was number two at the time. This would be one notch higher. He's never beaten the world number one. He's zero and two. Low. As we mentioned at the outset, Novak's on a 43 match win streak against Australians. He's got three set points here. Wonderful tennis, 49 minutes. And Alex Dimonor, 6 4, no let up, mate. No takes let up. the early advantage. serve one every point and by the way the physio was coming back down to see Novak and Novak waved him off so he didn't want him more I think he's aggravated him and I can understand why let's take a look at set one statistics that is remarkable serving from Demonor against Novak 70 percent first serves in play and not nary a point lost when he made it incredible but the thing that I'm most impressed with Demonor only five unforced errors 10 winners, two to one ratio, winners to unforced errors. That is discipline and amazing. And Djokovic, 18 unforced errors and just 14 winners. Normally when Novak plays, he's the guy with, with the, the less unforced errors. He's the guy who is very judicious about when he's offensive. Not today. Today, the defense has been almost impenetrable on the other side of the net from the Serbian. And he's tried to play attacking tennis. And uh, Alex, so far, has been incredible. And Fitzy, the variety has been impressive, hasn't it? Strategically, it's been a masterclass. Yeah, he's trying to be aggressive uh, more, just like Matt had been said. He, but that's how he tries to play. It's just that against this guy, it's so hard because his defense is so good. But it's the errors, I think, from Djokovic. Not quite at his best there in that first set. That's 
the quarterfinals. Oh. Spot in the semifinals in Sydney. The United Cup up for grabs here. And the best possible start for Team Australia. Alex Dimonor taking this opening set 6-4. So what does Novak do here? He's got the concern with the forearm. He's got plenty of worries with this man at the other end. Does he need a change of strategy, Jim, or does he just continue with... He's played a reasonable, reasonable set, so... I think it, it's not necessarily a change of strategy for Novak. Maybe a little bit more patience, but I think he was probably a little startled at all of the diversity coming his way off of the racket of Dimonor. Alex didn't play this way at all when they played last year, Fitzy, at the Australian Open. No, I, I think he's a little better here right now. And, and, you know, the match he played against Taylor Fritz was one of the best I've seen him play. And he's at the same level here. But I think Novak mentally has not been 100% here either. It's just a he is a little aggravated. As he'd be. Bit of an injury. It's hurting him. He's worried about it. And we saw that in the set against Lehechka in his group match when he lost the second set that he started to get a little agitated, but he fought his way through. He's a good player though, isn't he, Jim, Alex? He, he's getting better all the time. 40, 50. Yeah, he, you know, you can't compare to Djokovic, but but he is edging towards that top ten. I mean, to play a shot like that even is, is pretty telling. I mean, he, he's got control of the ball. He understands the geometry of the court. Really good world-class player. Again, Ben Sylvia. Good opening service game from Novak Djokovic. It's always interesting to see the players at the beginning of the year when they come out of the offseason, when they do have a little bit of time to try and improve a few different things in their game. And it's fascinating to see what new things emerge. And I think one of the things that is clearly emerging for Alex Dimonor is that the slice backhand is going to be a part of his arsenal that's going to be very important for him. It's, uh, it's a shot that, Fitzy, I think you've been lamenting a lot. It's underused. In the modern game, it was more used to back in, in your time and my time, and and it's still very effective. And Alex is certainly finding out in real time this week how effective it is against the best in the world. I think part of the reason it's effective is, is that they, the opposition doesn't see it that much these days, too. And what I find fascinating about this shot for him is I think the general point of view on Alex, as you've pointed out several times, is he's lighter of weight than most players on tour. He's not as tall, not as strong as most of the opposition he faces. So most people are thinking, well, he just needs to bulk up, add muscle, get stronger, match the power of his opposition. But the slice is a way around that because it gives him a chance to play offense on the next shot. It's a setup shot. It's the jab before the knockout punch. And it's necessary for him probably more than some players that have more artillery, more power. Yeah, we debated a little bit about this the other night in a, in a very friendly way. And I think we agreed that it, it's a shot that you know, the opposition has to work out how they deal with it. They can go back down the line or across court. But, if, but you know, it opens up some different opportunities for him. How's that? That's the way he wants to play. He, that time he got the short return off the serve. But if it goes short to his forehand, he's coming 30, in down the 15. line. Bingo. And that's the way he wants to play. Ooh. 
and he's at the net so quickly. And part of that reason, not just his speed, but he also he runs through the approach side. So he's half, he's got two steps going there already. Thank you, Bogan. Misses that one. Why is it important for Alex to be able to use the slice at times to get someone to hit a ball up so he can attack it? Because if you just look at his raw power, the numbers compared to the, his brethren in the top 50 in men's tennis, he's about 40th on tour in speed. He's not upper echelon on strength of forehand speed. But if he's able to take the ball early, he's taking time away from him, he gets much closer to the top speed. Misses. Yeah. What I mean by that is if Yannick Center is eight feet behind the baseline and hitting a forehand 100 miles an hour, and Alex Dimonor is on the baseline hitting 30. 190 miles an hour, they're going to arrive to the opponent at the same time. So he needs to be able to take the ball earlier for his power to emerge. And of course, he does have the elite foot speed, so he's one of the fastest to get there. So he's capable of doing that, and we've seen that a few times in that opening set. If he's 40th in forehand speed, what is he in foot speed, Jim? Top three. Yeah. Well, he's got out of a little spot yeah, there. Right there. One game on. Alcaraz is certainly in there with the foot speed, too. He's a remarkable athlete. And this, this guy in picture here in the red shirt, not too shabby in the movement department himself. Well, it's not just the from point A to point B, is it? It's from point A to point B and then back again, maybe in a different direction. Now he, he's, a, he's a Rolls Royce with an F1 engine, isn't he? No, no that. He's just got all bases covered. But he's in a bit of strife here. He's struggling a bit. And uh, you can see it in his body language down at court level. He's not at his best here, though, is he, right now? He's, he's, no, he's, he's, he's ripe for the taking. Yep. But here's also a little wrinkle. You have to be careful if you're Alex not to get overexcited and over-emotional, because if you get over-emotional, you might wake Novak's inner beast up. I mean, you, you want that baby to sleep.
Serbia. So Djokovic holds serve. Team Serbia 2-1 in, in Serbia his second set. So I just missed that at the start, but I presume that is an ice pack or he's now Victor doing the work. No, it's just a towel on top of the arm. Victor is now yeah. operating as the physio. <laughs> Multitasker. It's clearly in pain, but when you watch him strike the ball, he's still striking with full force. So it, it's not sapping the power of the shots at this point. When does it, on what shot would it hurt the most? Is it the snap of the serve? Is it? I would think it would be the snap of the serve when you when you really snap the wrist down hard. But only he knows for sure. Had a shot of the shoes of Alex Demonor. We heard the description of that in his previous match where he slides and he just, the friction on the court is uh, problematic for the shoelaces. Actually rubs the inside of the top of his shoe as the, Time. uses that back foot as a break. Jim went into his pod and picked up a pair of those. I reckon he knocked them off. I might knock those off, didn't you, Jim? Did you keep those? Not my size. Oh. I was hoping they would be. I thought you slipped a pair in your back pocket. See, look at the damage there on the top of the shoe. It's the inside of the left shoe. And the Team Australia, they didn't realise that tying up shoelaces was going to be such an important component of their role here this week. Team Seamstress. <laughs> It's interesting the demeanor of Djokovic. We see this quite a bit when he's when he's wounded of body or the score line. He seems to slow things down a bit. Looks like he's trying to center himself and just it's, it's a slightly different Novak when he's in this situation. Yep. I still can't believe that Alex has yet to lose a point when he's made a first serve against Novak on a hard court. It's unbelievable. I think it's got a bit to do with it when you look at the stats. He, his number of errors was five, right, in the first set? Mm -hmm. Very low. Novak's was 14. That's right. He's just not missing. Well, Novak's was 18, sorry. 18. Yeah, he had 14 winners, 18 unforced. Well, we saw him play uh, Taylor Fritz the other night. His, his errors were very low there too, but even lower tonight, I would assume. He's just not missing. So can I put something to both of you? On all of that, it was just one break of serve in the first set. Ron serve in the second set. So Demon was playing it. He's in the zone. The best he can. Mm -hmm. And Novak's not too far away still. Yeah, he's lurking. What are you saying, David? He's tough to beat. <laughs> <laughs> I think the record shows that clearly. <laughs> Australia. So what a, it, you just have to be on for the entire match and you have to have if you want to beat the best you have to be the best Fitzy that's what they say. Well I think you know Jim can verify this a lot easier than I can but I think for the lower ranked players to beat the highest ranked players the top five players in the world and particularly the number one you have to play at your peak they have to be a little bit off sometimes. If they play at their peak, who do you think is going to win? But he is playing awfully well here, Demon. And maybe even now he's better than what his ranking is. He certainly, to me, seems to be playing above his ranking tonight. He's, he's playing like a top ten player here. 
Maybe higher than that. This is that one. A rare error. What? The other night when he was playing magnificently and, and yeah, dismantling you know Taylor Fritz, Fritz is a very verbal player in the team zone. We got to hear a lot of Taylor's thoughts about it. And Taylor was really caught off guard, really surprised by the level and the style that Alex played. Now, Novak doesn't give much away, so we don't know what he's thinking, but I would imagine it's a, a little similar and probably thinking, can you keep it up, kid? Because that's what the champion would be thinking, you would imagine is you want to knock me off my 30, perch, you're going to have 15. to keep this level up for another 20, 30, maybe another hour and a half. Can you do it? from Alex Dimonor, refused to concede. Normally, in these types of situations, it's the there Great Wall of Serbia, not the Great Wall of Australia that is erected in these rallies. That is a ridiculous, ridiculous point from Dimonor. I reckon Leighton Hewitt is loving the fight. And what he's watching here. Again, and again, so after good. all of that, Novak holds serve. Team Serbia lead 3-2. Team Serbia leads three games to two. This is a good bit of coaching right here from Team Australia. Leave him be when he's in the zone. What say the win predictor, David? Well. They didn't give Alex Dimonor much chance at the start, and at the moment there's been a massive swing. Politicians would love that. 60% now, 47% swing. Look, I'm not certain that it's that strong at the moment. I still think it's closer to 50-50, Jim. Yep, I agree, but let's uh, revisit this amazing <laughs> point of defense from Dimonor. Just craziness that was an ankle breaking shot somehow he got it back in play and then dipped that one down and stole that one John Fitzgerald's got one of the best seats in the house courtside and uh, it's it's a classic encounter it's you know it's United Cup it's early in the season but this man likes demon is playing at the best level possible and can he continue Time. to deliver what he's doing so far? Because Novak's still in touch. Well, just for one fraction of a second, you ruined my night. You mentioned <laughs> politics. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's awesome to watch. I, I, you know, when you're a tennis lover, it's a privilege to sit here. This is, this is as good as it gets for me in terms of entertainment. And it's pure skill. It's competitive juices. It's drama. There's a long way to go. That win predictor, I'm not so sure about that. You, you, to beat this guy, to finally put him away, is very, very difficult. How many times last year was it? Was it six? Seven. Seven times? Six people, seven times. That's, that's how hard it is. So that win predictor is not, not judging an ordinary 
individual, ordinary human being here. So if you're in the break, when that statistic came up, it was 60-40 in favour of Demonor. 30 low. And it started off less than 20%. And we all agree that it's probably still closer to 50-50. 40 love. Impressive service we'll game. Squares balls. it up at three apiece. Three games all. New ball's coming. Novak thought about keeping his current racket, but he's going to switch to some fresh strings. Serbia grinded it out to book their spot here in the quarterfinals. Novak was here long, a long time yesterday. Stayed, watched all the matches, went to press, did a lot of work. Actually even came out, Thank you, my boy. took a picture on the court with all the, the transportation volunteers. He is a, a man who gives, gives, gives. And now Demonor is trying to take something from him. Net for six. Fifteen, love. Alex is just not giving Novak a constant diet of one particular shot. That was a looping backhand. Haven't seen much of that either. Novak overplayed it. Thank you. Thank you, please. Fifteen. Forty fifteen.
40 30. Danger moment here for Djokovic. Opportunity lurking for the Demon. Djokovic in these moments, most of the time, uh, two out of three times, he goes big into the forehand. You gotta watch for that. If he goes to your backhand, he goes a little slower, you have more time. Forehand grip here. The relentless pressure from Alex Dimonor. I actually thought he was going to come in off that return. I think that's another small uh, nuance that, uh, that he could add to his replica. Or repertoire, I should say. And Novak's mental approach here just seems a bit spasmodic. He seems like he's up for some points and not for others. He better be up for this one. Same thing holds here. Hold the forehand grip if you're Alex. You'll have time to switch to the backhand if he goes there. Not a sight you see that often. And Alex Dimonor breaks again and leads 4-3. Cottesloe Beach, Scarborough, just on the doorstep of the Central Business District. Beautiful beaches, great for swimming. In Indiana Tea House there, stands as a sentry. Saw a team from Poland there earlier in the week, surfing like this. And also hosts the start of the Rottnest Swim, where they uh, dive in there and swim out to Rottnest Island. There's a, a buzz around this arena. RAC, Serbian fans a little stunned. Spot in the semi-finals. Up for grabs. And this time it's Dimonor who will be the last to come out. Djokovic has been up the other end for a little while. I keep looking at, this, at the stats and I keep blinking because I cannot believe that Dimonor is still yet to, to lose a first serve point against the, the greatest returner we've seen. But here we are, a set and a break, still there. And look at that placement, that is untouchable. 
and that's the third or fourth time you've said it, and not even the commentator's curse can get him. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to point out that, that what we're seeing right now no. has never been seen before this late in the match versus Novak. Not even John Isner, not even the Giants have been able to pull this off. And it's not just the serve, although that's been spectacular with the placement. It's what he's done behind it as well, consistently. It's been awesome. And so now you start to think about the close because that's just as important to get to this position, but then to close it out. Doing a good job here on his serve. Game away. Novak Djokovic is on a 43 match Team winning streak Australia in Australia. Five games thanks to the 2019 Australian Open. Of course, he missed it in 2022. Four Australian Opens, two ATP Cups, an Adelaide Invitational. And of course, his two matches here. Thank you. Not up. Fifteen all. You've got to put the result out of your head, don't you, David? I mean, it's a rare thing to have an opportunity to beat the best player in your sport on the planet. It's a rare thing. So you've got to put the result out of your head or the potential result and just play the same. Djokovic desperate to hold here the force demon or to serve for it because that's a different situation as well. He's playing a bit of a strange game here there, Novak. Not, not his normal approach to a game of this magnitude. Net for service. Net for service. to the court will be serving it's for the match. Yeah. 
And so, Fitzy, as you said, you've got to think about the process and not the finish line, but he's got a couple of minutes now to finish, to think about the finish line. Well, he hasn't lost his serve yet, but yes, this game is different to the others. <laughs> it really is, no matter which way you look at it. But I think he seems, you know, he seems incredibly calm. He's a man of a lot of uh, experience now, Alex. And, and so he'll just face it and try to play it as well as he's played all the other games. Start with a good first serve and go from there, one point at a time. The old cliche. It's interesting the strategy here from the Australian bench. There's no one in his ear. Well, they don't need to be. Good point. They don't need to be. Just let him go. Fascinating the Australian team zone. No one in the ear of Alex Demonor. It's good restraint from the Australians not to all be chattering away at a million miles an hour. Let the man that's done the job so far Time. sit with his own thoughts. This will be interesting watching. Fifteen long. Dirty love. Only five Australians have beaten the world number one in the last decade. Kyrgios three times, Nancy Kokonakis and Jordan Thompson. We asked if he could close. Low. At the moment, Demonor is answering that question. Three match points. I suggest he doesn't look at the scoreboard. Played a couple of good points. <laughs> Forty thirty. Thank you. Yes.
Okay, so now Leighton starts to issue some encouragement. Serbian fans hoping that it's not over. Australian fans respond. Team Australia. Novak will be looking for that serve next time he plays him. David, he's gone there on all the big points. I would suggest one down the middle again. But who am I to suggest to this young lad? In a career best six four, win. Six four. The first time he's beaten the world number one. He gets Team Australia off to the best possible start. Look at that scoreline. 6-4, six 6-4 four, six four to Alex Dimonor. A special victory, no doubt about that. It was, Dave. That, that, that was one to remember. Like he, he played to a level that. Let's hope he can. Let's hope that's his normal now, because it's it's a little better than we've seen from him before. We think. Uh, Novak, you, let's just dwell for a second on how classy on how classy he is. Well, he almost got to that 100%. 97, he finished Jim for first uh, serve points one when that went in. Extraordinary stuff. Down to you. Couple of firsts for you tonight, Alex. First time that you've beaten Novak. First time that you've beaten a world number one. You've done it in Australia, representing Australia, wearing the green and gold. What's this moment like? I mean, it's extremely special. Um, look, Novak is an unbelievable competitor, and what he's done for the sport is pretty special. So uh, it feels surreal, it feels amazing. I'm happy to do it here in Perth and in Australia, so. So let's dig in a little bit. You guys played at the Australian Open last year and he beat you pretty handily. What did you learn from that match that you applied today? Well, it couldn't get any worse, I guess. <laughs> um, you, you know, ultimately when you go against Novak, uh, you just got to go out there, try and enjoy, uh, back yourself, and no matter what, just keep fighting till the end. And uh, today was my day. I'm, I'm happy I was able to get the win. And um... this one definitely means a lot. So thank you guys very much. It's been fascinating watching your style of play here this tournament because it's been a little bit different. You showed some new elements in your game, the slice backhand, the drop shot. We know you have the foot speed, but there's been some new things you're bringing in and they're paying a big dividend. Is that something you worked in the off season? Where has this come from? Well, it, it comes from uh, a lot of people not believing in me. So I'm, I'm just here to prove a lot of people wrong try to keep on getting better. Um, uh, 
ultimately, I'm never going to be the biggest or the strongest guy, so I've got to adapt. I've got to show that I've got variety in my game and I've got different styles of playing tennis. And I'm glad I was able to to bring this level today. No, there's no doubt about it. You brought some amazing tennis today, and you've put your country in an amazing spot. 1-0. You need one more match to make it to the semifinals. Move on to Sydney. Uh, is Isla ready? I know you've got a great mixed doubles team behind you as well. I mean, let's go, Perth. Let's get one more. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for this young Aussie. Alex Diemenar, what a night. And there's just that fire, too, which you need as an elite athlete. You mentioned those that uh, didn't believe in him. I'm not sure who they are, Fitzy, because He's got a lot of support, but obviously, you know, all athletes need something to burn the fire in the belly. Yeah, look, I don't know what he meant by that either. It's, it's it sort of surprised me that he said that, but it, but look, this is a wonderful young man. He, he's he's high quality in every area you look at, and uh, he's a, he's a kid that makes you proud to be an Australian. You need he's someone you want to follow, and who you you do uh, barrack for and, and want to win. So, look, it's a big stepping stone tonight, you know. Don't worry, Novak's going to be ready for him a bit more next time. But that's what you get when you start beating players of this ilk. So, uh, gee, a big stepping stone for him. That'll give him untold confidence, you would think, for the rest of the summer. Yeah, and when you're climbing the ladder, he beat Rafa last year. Rafa, world number two at the time. It's the first time he's beaten the world number one. But uh, this one is going to be memorable, no doubt. That goal of being a consistent top tenner on what we've seen in these past two matches is within reach now. The test, of course, is to maintain this great level. Here are the statistics. 97%. He got so close almost to pulling off the incredible. Not losing a point on his first serve when it went in. Well, he must have just lost one or two points at the end there on yeah, his the first last serve service game. <laughs> yes. and he was nearly there. He was 40 love, wasn't he? So he nearly got there. And uh, the unforced errors. Have a look at that. 11. That's Yep. Stingy. That, well, that's to me the most incredible thing because he hit the ball uh, into the corners time and time again. He skimmed the net with balls, and yet he only made 11 unforced errors against Novak Djokovic. That, that's that's the line for me. Wonderful match for Team Australia. Not over yet, of course. Change in the lineup for Team Serbia. Stevanov, Stevanovic coming in, and uh, he'll be up against. Well, Tomjanovic, but for now, it's about this man here, and there's the moment. Alex Dimonor gets Team Australia off to a winning start. 6-4, 6-4.